Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. I am very happy to share with you these facts on Stupendemis. Stupendemis was a Plurodiron or side neck turtle. They acquired such a name because their necks are so long that the only way they could fit under the shell was to fold their necks into one side. The preserved length of the largest known Stupendemis carapace or upper shell is 5.9 feet or 180 centimeters long and has been estimated to be as much as 10.8 feet or almost 11 feet or 330 centimeters long in the living animal. With the addition of the long neck, Stupendemis would have been even longer than the famously huge Archelon, a huge sea turtle that lived earlier in the late Cretaceous period. The largest freshwater turtle living in the Neotropics today is the Arbal turtle, which is Pognemis expansa, a pleurodire closely related to Stupendemis. Yet the Arbal turtle measures only 30 inches or 75 centimeters in length. Its fossils have been found in northern South America, in rocks dating from the Middle Miocene to the very start of the Pliocene, about 13 to 5 million years ago. However, unlike Argalon, Stupendemis was a freshwater turtle, and one that inhabited the river systems and lakes of northern South America around the boundary of the late Miocene and early Pliocene. The huge size of Stupendemis might be a response to the predatory threats living in South America, which included massive crocodiles like the caiman-like Purosaurus, Morosuchus, and Gripposuchus. Its weight helps Stupendemis stay underwater for extended periods of time, gracing on aquatic plants. On the other hand, it was probably a rather weak swimmer, unable to move its buck against a quick current, and thus probably avoided smaller streams. Stupendemis geographicus inhabited what is known as the Pebus system, a large wetland system that dominated northern South America during the Miocene. The wetland seemed to have favored gigantism in other aquatic animals, like the crocodilian Purosaurus and the rodent Phoboromus. Its growth rate is similar to extant turtles, suggesting a lifespan of perhaps 110 years to get a maximum size. Though its diet was previously interpreted as carnivorous, a well-preserved jaw indicates it might have had a more generalist diet, possibly therophagus, feasting on hard-shelled animals, or including fruit. Because Stupendemis geographicus fossils have been found in sites which yield a rich fossil fauna, even though little is done with certainty, much can be inferred about the ecology of these animals. Among the aquatic animals that shared the habitat with Stupendemis zuzai were fish, including catfish like Fractocephalus and Calicthini, crabacids like Acrigildia thranchi and the Tambaki, or Colosoma mercopinum, the South American lungfish Lepidosiren paradoxa. Trahiras like Paleohoplius, Asus brasilensis, and freshwater race and sharks. Crocodilians were diverse and abundant, among them such taxa like Soractosuchus fishery, Griposuchus, Morosuchus, Netosuchidae, and the giant Purosaurus brasilensis. Other turtles and tortoises found in the same deposits are Chalus columbiana, a prehistoric relative of Matamata, and Shelonoides. Further aquatic vertebrates included river dolphins and the larger darter, and Inga Frelegi. Terrestrial mammals were also abundant, and the fauna included many mega herbivores, like the ground sloth Acromylodon cambelli, Toxodontidae like Geranodon, and Trigodon, Proterotheridae, and Cabiomorthrodon, some of them of immense size, also like Chiotherium, Neopublema, Febaramus burmesteri, Podomarchus marinus. Telecomus amazonensis, and Tetrasilus. Smaller mammals living in that time and place were the dayline monkey, Stertonia, and the bulldog bat, Noctilio, Lacrimae lunaris. I probably butchered a few of these names, but nonetheless, altogether, this fauna is massively dominated by large herbivores and generally lacks terrestrial carnivores. It can thus be assumed that the habitat was mostly low lying rainforest that was seasonally flooded, as well as floodplains and swampland. The rivers must have been wide and slow moving as the fossil rich rocks are alluvial or eroded land deposits and do not show evidence of fast flowing riverbeds that would have dug into the sediment deeply while depositing little of their own. Additional remains of Stupendemis shells now found have revealed a male Stupendemis grew two enlarged spikes from the front of the shell that pointed forwards alongside each side of the neck. These spikes of wear patterns drew deep grooves on them and suggested they were covered by a keratinous sheath and used in combat between rival males. The larger the spikes grew, the more advantage they would have in combat, 
and may have also served a display function for impressing females. Large Pleurodiron turtles appear to have been very common in the river systems of South America during the Xenozoic, with another example being Carbonemis, a Pleurodiron with a shell 5.6 feet or 172 centimeters long that lived in South America not long after the dinosaurs went extinct. Stupendemis means astonishing turtle. It was named by R.C. Wood in 1970. It belongs to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Cardata, the class Reptilia, the order Testidines, the suborder Plurodira, the family Pedognemididae, the genus Stupendemis, and the type species Stupendemis geographicus. Two species have been described to date. Stupendemis geographicus was more robust. Its remains have been found in the Romaca Formation of Venezuela and in the Villavieja Formation of Colombia. Supendemis Zoza, marginally more slender and smaller, was recovered from the Solimoyes Formation in Acre State, Brazil. Nonetheless, these are currently considered part of Supendemis Geographicus, alongside remains described as Canonemis Tridentata from Brazil and Paragnemis Bathory from Peru. Species include the type Supendemis Geographicus and other species like Stupendemus sozai. It was probably an omnivore, possibly eating plants, animals, and almost anything organic that would fit into its mouth. The preserved length of the carapace of the largest individual specimen was 5.9 feet or 1.8 meters, though its estimated length was 10.8 feet or 3.3 meters. It has been discovered in the Oromaco Formation of Venezuela and Solimoes Formation of Brazil, both in South America. It lived in fluvial deltaic environments. It lived during the Mesinian of the Miocene to Sanclean of the Pliocene between 13 and 5 million years ago. And fossil representation includes remains of two species, including the carapace. And with that, thank you for watching! I find prehistoric turtle like creatures so impressive, I still have the idea of making 3D models and rebuilding prehistory to go back in time and experience these creatures. Quote unquote. These videos serve as the guides to learning more about the paleontology, paleobiology, and ecology of these creatures. I see it as something natural in the future work platform. Dino Kairos video incoming soon. It will be an extensive Dinosaurs on Earth episode. Thank you for requesting videos. I'm always open to suggestions and I'm happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. This is Ankyridian. See you next time.